Welcome. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I thank you for participating in the Transit Asset Management Principles for Transit Systems with Rail Assets webinar. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. For our first presentation, we are pleased to have Laura Zell with us today. Laura Zell is a Senior Asset Management Engineer at SEPTA, South East Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. For the past five years, Laura has worked in various roles within SEPTA's Engineering, Maintenance, and Construction Division. Laura was appointed as a project lead for SEPTA's Transit Asset Management Program Implementation Team in 2010. She has served as the project manager for SEPTA's State of Good Repair Database, developed a comprehensive capital asset inventory, and assisted with the business process assessment for the authority's infrastructure maintenance management system. Laura served as SEPTA's coordinator for the FTA State of Good Repair Roundtable and has been appointed to the Transportation Research Board's Standing Committee on Transportation Asset Management. She holds undergraduate degrees in both civil and architectural engineering from Drexel University. On behalf of SEPTA, I just would like to uh, give everybody an overview of what we've been doing in order to prepare our agency for the requirements of transportation asset management as has been specified in uh, MAP 21 recently. So I'm going to give you an overview of the agency and then talk a little bit about what we have been doing in asset management and talk a little bit about where we need to go next. Um, just to give you a little bit of context about our agency, um, SEPTA serves um, the Philadelphia metropolitan region. We have 2,200 square mile coverage area. We service Philadelphia, five surrounding counties, and provide commuter rail service into New Jersey and in Delaware as well. We provide a little bit over a million passenger trips per day, and we are the sixth largest public transportation agency in the country. Uh, we are a truly multimodal agency. We have commuter rail, heavy rail, light rail, bus, trackless trolley, and paratransit, which is operated. Um, we contract that out. Uh, one of the infrastructure challenges that we have is that our commuter rail line runs on territory that is um, operated by Amtrak and or CSX as well. SEPTA was created by the state of Pennsylvania between 1964 and 1983 from the consolidation of bankrupt regional transportation providers. As these companies went bankrupt, um, maintenance was not a high priority and neither was record keeping. So when we inherited these assets, the documentation um, was lacking, uh, to say the least, which has caused some interesting challenges as we've uh, gone through asset management practices. As I said before, the resulting system from all of that consolidation is truly intermodal. We have many modes. We have many types of construction and different asset management challenges as we prioritize maintenance and overhaul for each of these. Achieving a state of good repair is one of seven strategic business goals that drives our investment decisions at the authority. We are a mature system. We have not expanded in a very long time. In general, the philosophy of the authority has been to fix the system first, to continue providing safe and reliable service to our customers. Our biggest reinvestment areas have been in core areas, the trunks of the commuter rail lines. Uh, we rebuilt our elevated line between 2000 and 2009. When available, we do use maintenance activities that extend the useful life of our assets rather than full out replacing them. This is pretty much in alignment with the uh, FTA's recent goals uh, shifting more towards a focus on state of good repair. Many of you are familiar with the National State of Good Repair Assessment that was performed in 2010. Everyone remembers this study because um, of the backlog that was estimated with that. At the time, the National State of Good Repair backlog was estimated to be approximately $80 billion, and that once the system achieved the state of good repair, an additional $14 billion would be required annually to maintain a state of good repair. 
Um, but the other thing that came out of that study is when they tried to do the study, they realized that there was a lot of inconsistency in asset management practices throughout the country. So in addition to recognizing the state of good repair backlog, the FTA made among the number of programs to um, advance the state of the practice for asset management. They've sponsored forums to share best management practices. They've provided technical training and guidance. And most importantly, they've provided some funding to enhance transit asset management practice at the grantee level. Um, SEPTA applied for and was the grateful recipient of one of the asset management program grants back in 2010. This slide is a little busy, but it gives an overview of how we see asset management here at SEPTA. We kind of see it at three levels. At the most basic, the, the most granular, the day-to-day -day life cycle management of each of the assets. We are working on two different pieces of software to um, enhance our management practices on the most granular level. Then when you get into the investment prioritization, we have a, set, a third piece of software that we'll be using to prioritize investments. And finally, how all of this fits together and how the authority moves forward will involve the development of our asset management plan. Let me give you a little background on the different things that we're working on under our grant funding, the first being our vehicle maintenance information system. Um, our operations division has utilized the vehicle maintenance information system since 1998. Um, with that, we have a large data set that we've been able to use to make a lot of business process improvements since that time. Um, we've been able to revise our tax standards, really get a handle on our fuel economy, and do very efficient targeted vehicle overhaul campaigns with that information. Um, as part of the grant, we are upgrading the vehicle maintenance system um, to bring it up to today's standards. Unfortunately, on the infrastructure side, we did not have that legacy amount of data. And our goal with the grant was to be able to make similar business process improvements on the infrastructure side. We have four business units that perform maintenance and construction activities on our infrastructure assets. And each of them had records and information silos to different levels of sophistication. The goal of this project is to develop an integrated system for tracking asset condition, inspection, and maintenance records. And we performed a full business process assessment to develop functional requirements and select suitable software solutions and develop future practices going forward. The business process assessment itself was a very extensive effort. We included our deputy general manager, our chief engineer, the chief engineering officers responsible for asset maintenance, as well as their senior directors. And we went down to the foreman and even the staff level. We identified functional requirements, um, being regulatory compliance, uh, elimination of paper, identifying assets that have climate vulnerabilities. And we had to have the flexibility for the system to accommodate our processes for each of these different units and the diversity of the different assets that we had. And additionally, on top of the functional requirements, we had specific software requirements as well. Um, a lot of our maintenance managers had limited software experience, so we needed it to be relatively easy to use. And at the same time, we wanted a system that fit what exactly we wanted to do. We didn't want to buy an entire enterprise suite to only use 20% of the functionality of the software. The third piece of software that we're working on is our State of Good Repair database. That's a capital prioritization tool that's being used to establish our State of Good Repair backlog, to project future State of Good Repair needs based on asset life cycles, and to prioritize capital expenditures based on very simple metrics. This is a less granular asset inventory than what will exist in the vehicle maintenance or infrastructure maintenance systems. And it has some very basic components to it. 
The asset attributes include the age of the asset and its remaining useful life, any renewal activities that are associated with keeping that asset in a state of good repair, um, providing the cost of the renewal activities, the cost of whatever the capital replacement for that asset will be, and the impacted ridership for that asset. Um, as I mentioned, it is less granular. Um, we took our entire suite of assets and boiled that down to about 6,000 line items in a database. In the infrastructure and, in, and vehicle systems, we're going to probably have more on a line of 100,000 assets. Again, this is more of an age-based rather than a condition-based assessment. Age and condition data were regularly available for most of the asset classes, and we affiliated the age of the assets with the term decay curves that have been previously developed by FTA, but we also used SEPTA experience to see where some assets might have different life cycles than what were specified in term. Again, the state of the repair database is an AECOM product, and we had some extensive help from AECOM to develop the inventory. Uh, we had the AECOM staff come to, to SEPTA to talk to each of the engineering officers. We talked about the level of information available, the general condition of the assets, and what level of granularity was most appropriate for the uh, capital prioritization tool. We worked with each department to obtain the inventory information. As I said, we did have asset information from all departments. Some departments had very, very detailed information, and we had to kind of aggregate that for them. And other departments did not have enough information, so we went out and did some field reconnaissance. This is an example of how we worked with our track department to identify which assets went into the State of Good Repair database tool. Um, you can see we had three kinds of track with different uh, components to them, and we also identified certain activities within the track maintenance that were renewal activities that were required to be done in order to keep that track right of way in a state of good repair. Again, we talked about a le appropriate levels of aggregation. Uh, we told each department that we wanted to stay simple on the capital side. And we instructed them to group individual assets that had similar characteristics, such as similar service date, similar suit useful life, similar unit replacement costs, and also similar wearing characteristics. So you can see on the left um, a very detailed asset record um, in the maintenance management system will boil down to simply two items in the state of good repair asset inventory. I like the differentiation when I talk about our program. There's a difference between capital planning and maintenance management, both of which are very important components of asset management, but ha are done at different levels here at SEPTA. As far as capital planning went, we identified very key assets that would be addressed in capital programs. And then inspection and maintenance information is going to be more captured in the day-to-day maintenance management system, um, looking at a list on the left of items that were cataloged in our system for a shop facility, we identified a few very key components that would be addressed with capital programs. For the building itself, we looked at the roof, the HVAC, electrical, fire suppression systems, things that would be dealt with with capital replacement programs. We also looked at very at pieces of equipment that were integral to the operation of the shop, the large cranes, the wheel truing machines, the lifts, the paint booths, and the washers. The rest of that data is very important and vital to the operation, but those type of ex expenditures are dealt with in our operating budget, so we did not include them in the capital planning tool. I'm going to show you a little bit of the output from this data good repair database and what we've been able to do with it. We were able to estimate, based on our inventory, what our current state of good repair backlog is. And um, we've also been able to project what our 20-year needs will be as we go forward. 
our backlog is $4.7 billion. And then as maintenance activities come up over the next 20 years, we're going to need another $8.5 billion to address those to reflect a total 20-year state of good repair need of $13.2 billion. Um, that's very important to note that that is a year of analysis number and not a year of expenditure. So these numbers have not been corrected for inflation. Uh, we were able to demonstrate to uh, our stakeholders what the implications of uh, various levels of investment are. If we want to keep our system in its kind of current backlog, we would need to spend approximately $330 million per year. However, due to current um, funding here in the state of Pennsylvania, we're only spending about $200 million a year on our assets, which means we're not able to replace assets as quickly as they age into that beyond their useful life category. So we're able to demonstrate that as we underinvest in state of good repair, our backlog continues to grow. I have two slides of lessons learned. First would be from the state of good repair inventory assembly. Um, this is a good place to start with a asset management program if your agency has not started yet because it's a higher level of detail for the assets. And for this program, we said to ourselves, what is the future project as we developed the capital asset inventory to really help establish that level of granularity? Um, even with fewer asset items, this is an iterative and time-consuming task. And it really requires buy-in from all of the operating departments in order to have your inventory be successful. Um, we started with a capital asset inventory, especially on the infrastructure side, because we knew we had some gaps in our data. This was the first step in assembling the more detailed asset inventory. And we identified some deficiencies in the data and developed some plans for filling them. Since we started the State of Good Repair database, most of the departments have come to me since and said, hey, we've done some shop inventory, and now we can give you some more detailed information. Um, so it's been a a really good way to introduce the principles of asset management to people that may not have thought about investment prioritization that way. Again, we worked with AECOM for this program, and we worked with another consultant to help with the needs assessment. It's been very useful to have somebody else who's had to deal with this issue of aggregation as we go forward. Um, sometimes you look at your system and the level of assets that you have is a little overwhelming. So it's been really refreshing to have somebody to talk to and say, hey, how did you model track when you worked at this agency or that agency? Um, just some general lessons from the transit asset management program going forward. It's really important for you to define what your priorities are before you shop around for a software solution. Um, software is a tool, and it's a very valuable tool. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to use it as a tool to help your business practices and not have to revamp your business practices to fit the tool that you, support, that you select. And finally, I would also to you that input from peer transit agencies has probably been the most valuable thing to help us start our program. Um, SEPTA has participated in State of Good Repair roundtables, and you start to listen to other people talk about the challenges that they've had and realize this isn't as overwhelming as it could be. Um, the FTA is not having a State of Good Repair roundtable this year, but I would offer that you might want to look into some other things, such as the Transportation Research Board conferences. But again, talking to your peers, I think, is probably one of the best things to do. And as the FTA goes forward, they will be providing some guidance as well. This is an overview of how we've started to do our asset management program. Thank you.